Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Road to Glory Career Mode. We have got for you four games to watch, starting with a couple of what should be routine sort of games for us. First up, Southampton, who are in the bottom three after our flying start to Premier League life. We find ourselves top of the table, so uh, things are going very well for us. Following that one, we go on to then face off against West Ham United, who are doing a little bit better. But still, you know, given the circumstances, current form, you would say we're probably favourites heading into that. After the two games there, we face off against live games against Wolves away at Molyneux. They're in fifth, so they're having a nice start as well to their campaign. And then ending off the episode is going to be Liverpool. We've already been defeated once by Everton in the league. Can their Merseyside rivals do the same is going to be the end of today's video. you have to wait and find out. So... Today begins then with the Southampton game. They line up very routinely in a 4-4-2. Love a good old 4-4-2. Unfortunately for them, though, it's looking like it might be a difficult season. Looking like they might be on the verge of playing championship football. Got to admit, the signings they've made, the sort of upgrades, I expected more from them. Especially going into game when I saw this happen after 26 minutes. I knew that our front four was going to pretty much have a good time at things. Especially trying to create chances. We just need to learn to finish our chances off. Van Bergen on his left foot. His weaker left foot, should I say, as well. Um, he, he struck one, but it was straight at the goalkeeper. You know, you've got to be doing better than that. You've got to try and put it in a corner. Then Elena had one, which struck off the upright not too long later in the 35th minute. But you can see it was very much just one-way play. And that was us in complete control until Chris Sukasev in the second half burst through to the byline. Pulled it back. And in between four Southampton defenders came Take Fusakubo to put his one in front. So from Southampton's point of view, poor defending. When you've got four players between the ball and the man who's trying to get on the end of it, you've got to try and at least make something of this and try and clear your lines. So I feel that defensively, it wasn't necessarily us opening up that, uh, that chance. It was them just not defending it very well at all. And then Shane McNeil brings down a lovely lofted through ball. And he was shot by Weyer, saved by the keeper. Substitute Dwight Gale put it in. And the offside flag went up. He, re he wheeled away in celebration, trying to sack as if he'd uh, just, you know, got himself a goal. But... When you see the replay, it is right for the offside. Uh, Tim Weir's shot. When it comes in, Dwight Gale is in front of the football anyway, so it would not have counted. So, right decision, Lino. Fair play to you. It still didn't matter too much because we were dominating the game and we did hold on to win the game by a goal to nil as well. So, ultimately, we pretty much deserve that. Like, Southampton, you can see why they're in the bottom three. They struggle to really get on the ball. We dominate most of the play. You'll see the match facts here. Yes, we didn't necessarily convert our shots to shots on target because we had seven shots and only managed to get three of those actually on target. But it mattered the most with us actually finishing the one shot off, obviously Kubo's shot. So 1-0 win against Southampton at St. Mary's followed this with a game at Blundell Park against West Ham United. Like I said, not really doing too well, but not, I don't think, as bad as Southampton were going into this game. They're still down there. They're just not in the same position. But again, routinely, if you're looking at current form, you would like to say that we would be the favourites going into this. And that is the way the bookmakers had it. But again, the side from West Ham left a lot of questions. Thinking, with the upgrades that they could potentially have had, the money they've got. Other than Felipe Anderson, there's not really another like world-class player in that side. So the recruitment side of things at West Ham clearly not working at this current time. We went closest in the first half. Shane McNeil's header should have done a bit better with it. And then, second half, we sent through Shane McNeil who laid it inside towards Tim Weyer. Weyer gets a pot header towards goal. And uh, it was a very quick one at that as well. You had to kind of react quickly, the goalkeeper. I was going to say pot shot, but it was with a head, of course. But still, we had to keep battling away. And 15 minutes from time, I wasn't sure we were going to actually get a reward until Cox, the substitute, stole the ball back, laid it back inside to Weyer, Weyer towards McNeil. And he would not score a simpler goal this season in the Premier League. You can count yourself on that. Quite surprising to say the least. But at the same time, you know, for them, it was poor from West Ham. It came from their mistake. And that is the reason why... We held on to yet another 1-0 victory. And that, ladies and gentlemen, when I show you this stat in a minute, is going to be our fifth 1-0 win in seven wins we've had in the Premier League. Nine games in, seven wins, one draw, one defeat. We've had five 1-0 wins in that time. The only two other wins come in a 3-1 against Burnley and a 3-0 against Cardiff. Of course, a 1-1 draw with Chelsea in there and the early defeat to, to Everton by three goals to one. So since then... Five 1-0 wins. We're becoming the 1-0 win kings, as you should be known. But still, guys, that's it for the post-con portion of today's episode. We're going to jump into live now and enjoy the rest of the video. We are essentially the 1-0 kings at this point. I, I don't even know what to say. So, uh, 
Things are going well, of course. You guys are seeing it. Back-to-back 1-0 -back wins earlier on. We move into game against Wolves, who are high-flying up in fifth place currently in the Premier League. So not going to be an easy game at all at Molyneux, but we will try our hardest to come away with something from the game. That is the side completely unchanged as it has been for the last two games. Of course, we sent out a couple of players on loan once January kicks in. They're still here, though, with us at the minute. That is Shaw and also uh, McGuinness. So they are the two going out on loan. Shaw will be leaving to join Leicester. McGuinness will be going to Benfica only for the year, though. So we do have to get them back afterwards. So don't worry about that for the future. But, guys, we're going to jump ourselves into the third game of today's episode and see if we can pick up some points away to Wolves. We are the best defensive side in the division. We've conceded five goals in nine games, and three of those five came in game one against Everton in our first defeat of the season. Unbeaten in eight since then, and uh, also only conceded two in the eight we've played. One against Chelsea and one against Burnley. So at the minute, we are playing probably the best football we've played in the entirety of this series. That has to be said. For Wolves, they've gone with a back five. That is out on your screen. Obviously high flying up into fifth at the minute which I'm quite surprised about considering the fact that we just faced Southampton earlier on in the episode and I felt they had an all right squad. Whereas I'm looking at this Wolves one, I'm wondering how on earth they've been able to get up to fifth. Maybe I'm being a bit too, uh, too harsh there, but yeah, it's going to be a tough game. They're obviously, they've obviously got something about them, otherwise they wouldn't be in the top five. You saw our lineup though, so I'm not too worried about this one. It's time to get underway. McNeil, Kubo. Back towards McNeil. I was actually looking for Weyer who made the run, but we didn't give him the ball. Instead, it goes to Sukasev. Weyer's not central anymore, so I can't lay that ball in towards the box. Comes to Elena. Elena's going to get the shot away. Blocked well initially. And I actually wanted Van Bergen to take that touch on the left foot and go down the wing. But for some reason, his touch was poor and it took him inside. And that then kind of gave the ball away. Again, though, looking at the side of Wolves, they don't seem to want to come out of much. They're, they're quite happy sat behind the ball, just waiting for... Potential counter-attack. Tim Weyer again looking for another shot. This time it does break the defensive line. Not blocked and Ruddy saves it. Kubo out wide towards Sukasev. 38 minutes on the clock. Looking for a cross this time. It goes deep towards the head of Weyer. Weyer flicks it back in to McNeil. Who finishes on the volley to give Grimsby Town the lead after 40 or so minutes on the clock. Wolves nil. Grimsby won. And it's the hot shot. Shane McNeil with it. Get in there. The cross from Sukasev, flicked down by Tim Weir at the back post. Finished brilliantly by Shane McNeil. Spoke briefly before this about the uh, retaining of possession for both sides. Neither one really able to get on the ball and make things happen. But finally something has happened and it's Shane McNeil with a finish as the ball transports through his body to allow us to volley it. There you go. Wolves nil, Grimsby one at Molyneux. And that's the first moment of quality in the game which has lacked a lot of it really. Van Bergen trying to drive Grimsby forward again. Looking the more likely at the minute to try and get a second if we can. Van Bergen looks towards Weyer. Weyer gets it under control. Tim Weyer's going to get the shot away. Woo! Imagine if that had occurred in the top corner. That would have been some effort. But fortunately, hasn't quite worked out the way we wanted. It wasn't too far away though, so it's not too bad. One thing I've got to mention as well is in regards to, obviously, the EFL Cup and the FA Cup. I understand we get Europa League football and such by trying to win those. But unfortunately, it's going to come down to the fact that we probably won't have the squad depth in order to really challenge. So that's why I'm not too concerned with them. And in terms of the Premier League at the minute, yes, we are top, but I'm sat here and I genuinely do not expect to stay there. You know, it's a long season. And for the most part, the big teams have not sort of shown up yet. The minute they do, you'll see a difference. Oh, poor pass. McNeil in now and should score. Mm, Shane, you've got to do better than that. He finished off the first one really well. We get a little bit of luck from Wolverhampton Wanderers defensively giving the ball away in a poor area. But then Shane McNeil's got to do better with his strike. It comes towards Elena now. Elena looking for the shot too. Ruddy there again. So a couple more chances in the game for us. Unable to convert either one. Way sides in on a yellow card. Gets the ball out of play. It's time for a couple of changes. But yeah, we've got to be finishing off those opportunities. Cox is going to come on. Also going to bring on Dwight Gale as well, and maybe Robert for Van Bergen too. Remains 1-0 with 17 minutes to go. Honestly, I'd take the point. Even though Wolves haven't created anything yet, we've not really done too much to get ourselves too in front. So, you know, a draw wouldn't be the end of the world in terms of results. Especially considering before the season, if you'd have said we'd have been up here, I'd have 100% taken that. McNeil, Gale off the bench to find its way to Roberts. Plot by Cox on the way through. 
Got two minutes additional time. I mean, the game itself has not been a fantastic performance from either side. It's just that one drab goal that separate, separates it. I said drab. It was quite a decent goal, actually, we crafted. But other than that, there hasn't really been too many moments in that game where you thought, wow, that was serious quality. So from both teams, they have to hold their hands up and say they were both poor there. But obviously that goal made the difference from Shane McNeil. You can see Wolves didn't even craft a chance. They didn't even shoot. So uh, it begs the question, right? Again, I go back to my point. I don't know how they're in fifth place when they didn't really even threaten us at all. And again, ultimate difficulty, you know, <laughs> without sounding too harsh, they should be creating. I would love it, right? If they would create more chances but wouldn't necessarily have the sort of goals to shot ratio they do. Because pretty much what generally happens is you're playing it and you might create 10 chances, whereas they'll create two. And they'll score, what, two of those or one of those, let's say. Whereas you only score one or maybe three of your ten in that sort of region. Whereas that tends to happen. I would prefer if it was like a game where, you know, you've created ten, they've created eight. And, and it ends in a 1-1 draw because both sides, you know, have wasted them. So, yeah. Poor from Wolves. Pretty poor from us. But it ends up being a win. And after ten Premier League games, we've only dropped five points. Pretty crazy. The only side so far to have defeated us was Everton. Can their Merseyside rivals do the same? It's coming here from Blundell Park in the Premier League. Mike Dean, the referee. Love a bit of Mike Dean, don't we? Right, that's the side. Again, strongest lineup, Similar to what we've been going with in nearly all the games. And obviously, same substitutions have been coming in. Going into this, we are not doing too bad in terms of really making our name for ourselves. But this is where we now need to keep it going. Liverpool are going to be one of those teams where I feel we're going to struggle a little bit more defensively today because they should, in theory, with the side they've got, create more chances. We've been fairly good at the minute in terms of keeping clean sheets, not really giving too much away, but with Mane, Salah, Firmino in your side, it's going to be tough. Here we go then. We're about to get underway. Like I said, Firmino, Salah, Mane as the front three for Liverpool is going to be some test today. How is our defence? That's actually been pretty solid, going to cope. More importantly, are we going to be able to craft chances or are we just going to get bad here? They're not doing the greatest in terms of their league position. Spurs are currently second in the Premier League just behind us. So uh, they're the sort of side to watch at the minute. But I feel Liverpool are going to be our first proper difficult test since Everton when we were 3-1 down in that game. Firmino's header ready doors. Oh, way his ball through. Looking for the on-running McNeil who's going to beat the keeper to it and try and chip him and off the line. By Virgil van Dijk again. That's two chances now we've had in a, in a couple of minutes where we've got through the back line of Liverpool, but we haven't been able to find the finish as McNeil cuts inside brilliantly. Shane McNeil trying to drive it, and it's just prime positioning from Virgil van Dijk, who is quality, isn't he? But no offside flag given. Oh, Sukasev, poor pass. No offside flag given, rightfully so. McNeil goes through, chips the keeper. Not enough power behind it, though, and Virgil van Dijk recovers. Marcelo wrong-sided. Chance for them to put the cross in now. Still, Mohamed Salah wrong sides us. That's brilliant from Salah. Cross whipped in, but Darfalu steps in to do business. Otherwise, we were in trouble. Way is going to get the ball now as well. McNeil trying to get the other side of Taylor. He's doing a pretty poor time of, uh, of trying to keep McNeil away from getting close to the Liverpool penalty area. He's had a couple of moments here. Kubo, 1-2. Mitchell Van Bergen through on goal. Van Bergen, he's got to finish it. Oh... I don't need to see the goal decision system. It was nowhere near. Mitchell Van Bergen, though. Three-star weak foot. See, he is right-footed. I don't know how much blame I can put on him here. But to me, you've got to be finishing this chance. You can see where we aim the intended shot. Like I said, I know full well he's got a three-star weak foot. But the aim is there to the bottom corner. That's where you want it. And he just drags his shot massively wide. Two real big chances to go one nil in front here in this game in this first half. Didn't take either. Will it come back to cost us? Right, this is getting absolutely ridiculous. That's three now that Mike Dean has given, which have been appalling decisions. Nothing in any of the three. And Liverpool now get the chance to have a potential shot before the break. Henderson going to shoot the free kick. Saved brilliantly by our goalkeeper. Shouldn't have been in that position anyway because it was never a free kick, Mike. Sort it out for the second half. Cox through. Robert, use your 
well, I'd say pace, but I don't even know if you've got any. Robert, wrong siding them. Still on the ball. Bit unfortunate to come away with it. Elena, out wide towards McNeil. McNeil. <laughs> oh, it's the chance is gone. The chance is gone. The pace that Robert just had, didn't have in that situation was the reason we've lost this chance now. But Elena's going to try and curl one. Oh, Elena's done it. Grimsby won. Liverpool nil at Blundell Park. 73 minutes in and we finally got our just reward. Get in. Look at this. The curl on that shot as well from Elena. Exactly what you want to see. And at this time as well, usually in previous games, he'd have been off the field of play and we would have made the change probably, you know, for Guendouzi. But today left him out there and we've got our reward for doing that. The question is though, can we make sure we hold on to this win? As uh, so far, it's not been really a situation that we've had to worry about too much. We've defended pretty well. I think that's the experience of Marcelo and Ramos at the back though. And you saw obviously earlier on in the one-on-one -on -one with Mane against Darfalu. Darfalu getting the better of him. So, you know, it, it comes down to us... At the minute, being able to stop any threat that really Liverpool can throw at us. Having said that, though, there is still time. And they are building something here. I can't seem to get near them, even if I want to. Lovely stuff. Firmino shot. McNamee gets there. Three minutes from time. Elena just trying to keep the ball in this corner. Going to find a way out towards McNeil. Who's going to play it all the way backwards towards Darfalu. It's about making sure we keep hold of this result, even if we're playing these dirty tactics. We've got to try and just hold on to what will be a massive win with a minute to go here at Blundell Park. We've deserved the win, and it looks like we're going to get it unless for a massive mistake in the last couple of seconds. Ramos on the ball towards Darfalu. There is the full-time whistle. Four 1-0 wins in a single episode today. I mean, you're seeing, we're literally clutching at straws. It's pretty much smash and grab. I don't even know how on earth we keep doing it. But the experience of Ramos and Marcelo at the back is seriously paying off. Salah didn't really have too much of a good time down this side. And that's probably down to the fact that it was, you know, more of a Marcelo show. You can see they had more shots, more on target. And uh, it was a bit more tough, that one. But we held on and got the 1-0 win. And that, my friends, is going to be the end of today's video. Thank you for watching this episode of the Road to Glory Career Mode. If you did enjoy it, a like would be greatly appreciated. I will try and get you guys another one of these out as soon as possible. Um, so if you do want to be notified whenever that video is live, make sure you have the notification bell turned on. If you like what you see and you're new around here, hit that subscribe button as well. Follow me on the channel. We usually up uh, will upload two videos a day. I'll try to as best we can. Um, unless, of course, something is going on, which I usually tell you about. But... That's how the league table's looking. I mean, look at this bottom uh, sort of six, right? Cardiff, Burnley, Southampton. But then you've got Chelsea in 15th, 14th, Manchester City, 11th is Liverpool, Everton in 10th, Arsenal into 5th, Manchester United in 4th, and Spurs in 2nd. So at least they're sort of climbing the table. But you can see Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, not in areas where they should be, especially City. Only two wins from 11 games, similarly for Chelsea as well. And we rejected Chelsea last episode. So they need some body to go in there and turn it around because right now things are not going to plan for them for us though things are very much going to plan we sit top of the Premier League table by five points not quite sure how that's happened whether or not we'll keep it or not we will find out over the course of another 27 games we've got McNeil in there for the top scorers with seven and 11 not too bad in terms of assists Way is in there with three and 11 with clean sheets McNamee with eight clean sheets but admittedly six of those eight have been one nil wins <laughs> so uh, you have to consider that as well that's it for today, though, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all again tomorrow from 4 p.m. for another video. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll catch you all then. Adios.